you know when something is good for you? Is it a feeling, an emotion? Is it a thought that you have? What do you know for sure is good, beneficial? Or as my guest today likes to call it, human friendly. <laughs> my name is Valerie Hope. I am your host for today's time to come alive. This is a weekly podcast that gives us the opportunity to become more conscious, more connected, and as a result, even more creative. I'm so excited to introduce my guest to you today. I, I met this guest, it's so interesting how people just show up into our lives, sometimes very unexpectedly. I got a voicemail message you know, you, I don't answer my phone if I don't recognize the numbers, just so you know. So if you try to call me and I don't have you in my phone book, you're not, you're, you better leave a voicemail. That's the only way I know to call you back. But it was funny because I got a voicemail, uh, I guess two, three months ago, and, and it was a woman speaking to me in English but had a Spanish accent and, and was telling me how she was introduced to me by uh, a mutual friend and that we were supposed to connect because she would, she thought I would be a good addition to a, a group she was starting up. And so it was, her voice was so inviting and, and enthusiastic. And, and, and Maria, uh, you're online with me now. I just want to say that your voicemail was so compelling that I'm like, who is this lady? And okay, so if Paloma knows her, then I should probably say hello. So I called you back and we had this wonderful conversation on the phone. And then you invited me to come to your co-working space and we talked for like, I don't know, two hours? <laughs> more? Yeah. Or probably more, but I, I could definitely tell that you are a person who had come to life with, with the work that you were doing. And you even talked to me about some of the changes that you'd made in your life to get you to the spot. And I thought, ah, she needs to be on the podcast. <laughs> so welcome to Time to Come Alive, Maria Claudia. Thank you, Valerie, for the invitation. This is incredible to be part of this time. I, I was talking to you previously and I was telling you how this podcast is a validation for the things that I'm doing around and because it's human friendly, you know, I, I was telling you that it is that joy that we need to experience in life and needs to drive us forward that now that is being actually promoted it's like oh yes good go for it <laughs> well it makes all the difference i think when we have the opportunity to actually connect with somebody that's moving in the similar direction or wants to see come to to fruition or come to life the things that are important for other human beings and i think conversations like this as you know are so dear to me and I'm so happy that I get to spend some time with you talking about that. So just so those of you who are not familiar, um, Maria Claudia is gonna tell us a little bit about this, but her name is Maria Claudia Lorza. You're Colombiana. Yes, I'm <laughs> Así Colombia. que casi paisanas. We're you know, near, near neighbors there. Oh yeah, Panama, definitely. Colombia. And I also know that you're the CEO for Human Friendly. So let's just start with that because I think people need to better understand the term human friendly. And you shared some things about what you discovered that I thought were really interesting. So what is human friendly and why does that mean something to you? Well, um, every time I, I give my card to someone and they read it, they say human friendly and they tilt their head, their head and it's like, uh, what are you all about? <laughs> because human friendly is vast and huge but believe it or not um, when I started the company I researched human friendly and they were dog friendly whale friendly job friendly car friendly everything friendly but human friendly and it's like I can't believe this yeah it's because we are so into our goals into our heads into our thoughts uh, into our go and Humph it every day. <laughs> and, and you can see I make a lot of words, so <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> That's okay. Be uh, this is part to be creative. It's all good. I think so. <laughs> so um, 
what about caring for us? When you go to a supermarket and I was standing up there between the aisles, I see all these products and I'm thinking, my goodness, they all advertise, they have this, they low fat, they have low sodium, low fat, low sugar, but, but what is really good for you? Who is, out? I, I, I'm feeling not trusting, I'm feeling like, what is this? Why are we not a little bit more human friendly? What, what about caring for ourselves? So that's the basics of human friendly. Sustainable health and wellness. And, and that is like, it doesn't need to be because I take a pill. It doesn't need to be because I ate this specific product or this specific dish for a while or diet. But how can it make it sustainable? Something that lets us relax and feel cared for. Mm. So that's where human friendly is, when human friendly is born. And, and of course, human friendly is also like a little bit of my background um my life and my career has has been in different directions this is actually my third career but go for it uh and human friendly has a little bit of everything it's like when you come come home and say all i got through all my journey is helping me to put a piece here and to bring it and share it to the world Mm, I love that. And, you know, I think it's interesting when you say this is your third career. I, I wonder if any, and people do count. I think it depends nowadays. There's all, most, many people today have so many things that they use as a, what I call a vehicle to express their talent, creativity, their passion, and, and to drive their income. <laughs> and so yeah. we need, we need vehicles for all of it. What, what was it that, so talk to us a little bit about what it was like before. What was Maria Claudia doing before you noticed Human Friendly? What was life like for you? Well, um, my career is in communication, advertising, and marketing. Uh, that's what I went to college for. I did a master in business administration and international business. And I was the director of advertising and marketing for a newspaper in Colombia. And when I came here to the States, when I moved back to the States, um, I was working in marketing strategic communication for Verizon and um, very driven. That's um, my go, 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 go. And I was more in the boardroom, one meeting linking to the other and strategizing these big plans. And it was fun. I loved it. Uh, definitely. But at some point, I had to travel more than I wanted. And I had a little six years old at home that one day when I was in Tampa in one of these big meetings, um, the executive assistant just broke the meeting and said, you need to come to the phone. And it was her teacher and my daughter was bowling because she hadn't seen me for about three days. Mm -hmm. And she was definitely wondering where I was. And that brought me home. I was like, wow. Uh, first I'm mom, then I'm executive. Mm. And that really landed me at my feet. So it, even though I was very successful, I also realized that she was needing me. And, and I was just like, I, I, I talked to my, my boss and everyone in the marketing department. And they really needed me there. Uh, I guess technology wasn't as developed as it, as it is today. We didn't have Zoom meetings, nor Teamworks or anything. We had to take a plane and go there and be absent for sometimes tomorrow, you got a meeting, go. And I had to be ready for it. And as I was being more successful, uh, more travel was involved and it was required. And well, here I was. But I had Mariana with me and my little daughter. That is not little anymore, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I came back and I guess I had such a distress that her teacher noticed on, on my face. And, and then she said, I noticed that every time you're back in Texas and, and you're available, you come and meet with your daughter and you help me with groups of students. Have you ever considered becoming a teacher? And I'm like, what? <laughs> not in a thousand years why do you say that <laughs> and 
and really her observations were correct. I, I was thriving every time I was there spending time with children and, um, and I didn't have noticed that about myself. So since I have a career and a master's, Texas has something that is a teacher certification program. Mm -hmm. And I started my certification and I literally changed the boardroom for the classroom. <laughs> that was it. And within two months, I was like, what I have gotten myself into? What? It was a room full of four years old. And I was like, oh. <laughs> That is, well, I mean, is it really a big change, Maria Claudia? I've been to boardrooms too. <laughs> four-year-olds, the four-year-olds come out in the boardroom, just so we know. <laughs> yes, yes, and you have to help them all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, little did I know then, when I was doubting myself, that it was going to be one of the greatest journeys of my life. It lasted nine years, and I noticed that the generations of students that I was helping, um, they became gifted and talented later on. When they went to kindergarten, they knew how to read, write, solve problems, and those things that I was now being able to give to my daughter, um, actually, they came through them as well. So I was able to help them as well. And, um, you know, when you do things with the heart, because the, this was a leap, leap of faith. I was going to reduce my salary in half. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought I had, we had our car, we had our place. It was paid for uh, half of the money. It really, it was my daughter. So mm -hmm. I went with all my heart and did it. And she became my helper in the classroom. She was helping me what to teach them. No, mom, that would be too boring. And then I'm like, go for it. So I had to come back to her level to listen, to really listen to what mm. is, was important to her. And I think this was one of the greatest decisions of my life. And people say, well, it was your career. Yeah, but it was my daughter too. And believe me, when you are a leader, your leadership show up, shows up in other places. So in this yeah. case, I became a leader of the school. I create a lot of programs. I help, help a lot of parents. I got involved with conscious discipline. That is something wonderful that every teacher should know about it and every parent. And um, at the end, I was able to help those students that in a most importantly, help my daughter. Mm. Within six months, she became a gifted and talented student herself. She was in such a state of, I don't know what is next, that she couldn't really concentrate and focus and she couldn't be herself, enjoying herself mm. because it was a turmoil in, my, in our lives. You know, what I was living, it was impacting her so much. Yeah. So... I'm, I'm there for Mariana. I'm being able to help her, her school. She's being able to help at my school. And that created a very strong little girl that when she was ready for college, she applied to 24 schools. Mm. Thanks God, she got scholarships for all of them. And she finally decided to go with TCU in a STEM full ride scholarship that is just beautiful. And uh, she was prepared. She was a mature girl that was stable and mentally healthy. And uh, that's when I decided, you know what? I have done it for the students. I have done it for my daughter. Now I'm gonna do it for me. And that's mm -hmm. when Human Friendly takes place. And I said, okay. you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> I, you know, I think there's so many beautiful things that you brought into your, to the example you shared about just transitioning from one career to the next, because it sounds like not only was your corporate career really successful, and but you also enjoyed it, that you were fulfilled by it, you were making an impact in ways that mattered to you. 
And the fact that you then had that call that let you know that your daughter actually needed you, that uh, the fact that you had this, the, the presence of mind to know that you could take your talent, your gift, your, your skills, and redirect it to a resource in a way that would not only benefit your, your daughter, but it would also, it sounds like, benefit you in the long run. I think that, you know, that, that's really a wonderful example of living human-friendly, is that it's not about the thing. Like you said, it's not about the medicine. It's not about the particular food. It's not about the environment. It's for you to have noticed what was moving you, right? The things that, that inspired and moved you. Let me, so let me ask you a couple of things. I want to go back to the, 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 the second career move you made. Uh-huh. What? <laughs> so when you, when you moved into the classroom, what were some things that you noticed about yourself and how you were interacting that made, made you, uh, I don't know, maybe helped you or, or allowed you to really bring your talents and gifts to the class? Well, um, this is when I said that my first career was about mind. My mm. second career was about heart. And mm. when you combine mind and heart, you become wise. Mm-hmm. And that's what human friendly is about. It's about bringing wisdom into the world and saying, hey, you know, there is a better way. <laughs> and we can care about us. And it's not going to hurt anyone. We can still be successful and lucrative. So, you know what? Um, when I say hard in my second career, I took things like I noticed pretty soon that four years old, you have 20 seconds to get their attention. Otherwise, they're gone. And mm. then they're not. <laughs> so... First of all, you have to establish connections with them. You have to be heart on heart. You have to understand that that little child, I I did it for economic challenging uh, communities. So many times those children um, didn't have uh, breakfast or didn't have lunch or the meal they were having at school was the only meal they were going to have throughout the day. There were kids that the, their parents were very, very busy as I was. I start seeing the reflections of what a busy parent, the impact that a busy par- parent has in the life of their little children. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the more I learn, I said, I'm doing the right thing. And so coming from advertising and marketing, I knew I have 20 seconds to make an impact and engage them. So I start instead of selling products, like I was before, now I was selling knowledge. And now they were engaged because they were like, oh, this is gonna help me, let's do it. (laughs) Yes, I can see a four-year-old saying, I can see this will be useful in my future. But that's so awesome though, because you're right, in, in, in marketing, you do have just like 20 seconds to capture the audience, right? Those Super Bowl ads, all those 30 seconds, everything is jam packed. Can you give us an example of like how you translated that knowledge into the classroom? Like what, what would those 20 seconds look like? Like, for example, you know what? Today we're going to talk about the crocodile. But who would like to know how to draw a crocodile? That seems difficult. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> before we go into the crocodile, we got to know that we have to use the number three the letter C, and we have to use the letter Y and the letter V. And they are like, so I was making connections with random staff. And then I brought the story of the crocodile. And then as I was telling them the story about how they do, I start with the number three, but we are not going to make the number three right because how is the number three? But now we're gonna turn it around to make the noise, nose of the crocodile. And they are like, <laughs> so little things like that. I'm not telling them how, now you need to learn the number three and how do you make the number three right? No, here they were finding something useful for that, for that number three. And now we're gonna do three, 
three little fingers on <laughs> the crocodile foot. And they're like, huh, okay, three legs like that. And as I was doing it, they were doing it. And then they will create in iPads and in, in technology or in the computer, and let them create their own story about the crocodile. And they will write it and they will find a partner. And sometimes with my little kindergartens later on, I'm like, okay, you go and get two different puppets and those will be your characters. And go there and get a poster and that will be your scenario. And you guys together are going to draw a story and then later on you're going to write it and later on you are going to read it to us. And these are kindergartens, gardeners who were able to choose characters, find the setting, draw a story, write a story and read a story to their classmates. That's phenomenal because I mean, not only were you translating what you learned in the boardroom into this classroom, but you know, you brought in problem solving, you brought in creativity, not only were the basic, you know, the reading, writing, et cetera, was in there, but also you had the opportunity to, to give them a, a way of self-expressing, which is what art generally does, right? It brings people's, the, their create, creative expression out in different ways. Love that. Love, love that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but you see, I, I didn't sit that, uh, stood up there and say, now you're going to write a story. Yeah. Write it. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> you got to calm down to their level. Mm. And for sure, you have to have their buying. <laughs> and that is built through connection, through heart. Mm. And through, uh, you know, this is very important. You look very important when you're writing. Because you look like a big guy, and they're like, <sighs> <laughs> "See, I told you, is exactly like being in the boardroom." <laughs> it is. <laughs> we just use different language. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so now, so so obviously, making that move not only helped you find another creative way to, to share your gifts and talents, but also benefited your daughter and what she needed for her own development. And, and I love the fact that you said she uh, became gifted and talented after a, just a few months, right, of, of now having that attention and, and being focused and, and not having to be concerned about the instability she was experiencing before. Talk a little bit about how did you know when it was time to transition. Uh, after you've, you've worked with your daughter, you were in this school path. I, what, were, I imagine you weren't her teacher f the whole time she was in school. So how long were you there? And when did you know that it was time to transition? Well, um, I was for seven years at a pre-K school that uh, we have here in Irving with 56 different nationalities. And I said, uh, usually my plan was to be two or three years, but really I was learning so much about different cultures, about different people, that it was kind of hard not to be there. Because uh, first, the impact that you have with children, you're like modeling this clay base. They are just clay in your hands and you're impacting the whole foundation of what their learning experience will be. If they're able, they're learning things like focusing through these activities, being engaged, being like uh, driven. And those things, later on, I noticed they, they took with them and put them into the different classrooms. So for seven years, I did that. And I also did a master's in education and leadership. One of the things that maybe you don't know is like a, I'm an eternal le learner and I have done master's on all <laughs> sorts because um, I feel they needed to have a better teacher so I needed to better myself so I did a master's in education and then in leadership and uh, so I went to experience elementary school after that and I taught third grade and then kindergarten uh, but my daughter was actually um, graduating from school and she got this beautiful scholarship that it was her gift to her but also to me mm -hmm. because 
and this is how life is, you know. If I would have stayed in corporate, I'm sure I would have to pay for her career because I had a daughter who couldn't concentrate and couldn't be okay with herself and what was going on. And maybe I had to pay for therapy and so forth, you know, different things. And, and she turned out okay. And I'm not advising people to just leave their careers, but that's what I learned later that I, probably I didn't need it to leave that career, but they were things that I could have done better if I would have known. For example? Example. So some of the things that I did doing human friendly, I also teach them in a corporate level. So corporate wellness exercises that are designed for those working parents that need to be there for their children and they don't have the whole day and life continues but now you have some tools that you can use with yourself while you're working and while you're home and that will help them to recenter and be there for them so that's why i'm telling you human friendly is a combination of mind and heart to become wise it's just taking the experience that my corporate career gave me with what I learned in education to be able to give it to people because I know how hard it is. Mm. So when I transition, my daughter is now being taken care of by her, by herself at this young age. And I didn't really have to invest in a, in an education now, but it was time for me to take my little savings and say, you know what, let's swim and do what I need to do and what I dream about. That was human friendly. And that's when I started the company and say, thank you, sweetie, because human friendly is also the gift that you're giving to me for all those years of dedication is the way I feel. And you mentioned that for you after having spent those seven years in education that you now felt that was time to take care of yourself. So, so what did you notice that needed to be cared for that wasn't being cared for before? I feel that many times in education, we're more concerned about the objective of the day, the curriculum, the lesson plan, um, the form more than the substance. So for that reason, uh, we task ourselves like little donkeys that start putting stuff on their back. And now this one. Uh, and by the way, now this one, two, two, two. And we don't take things away. We just keep loading ourselves up. And it, in education, it tends to feel like you're running behind a train and that you never catch it. Because it's just, I'm almost there, and the next day, oh, wow. And for those who think that education is from seven to three, you're wrong. <laughs> because education, as soon as your students leave, is your time to prepare, to do lesson plans, to get your copies, to grade, and do so many things. So I remember having time with my daughter, but also going to bed two, three o'clock in the morning, just making sure things were ready for the next day and the next week. So I became an excellent planner. That also helped me. <laughs> but that kind of lifestyle, I think you have people say, oh, but you got your summers. Oh God, you need those. <laughs> you need to recover because you spent a lot of time and energy just by not just helping all the students. And in my case, when I was in pre-K, there were 40 or more students at the time, um, 20 in the morning, 20 in the evening, in the afternoon. Um, but, but the demands we are putting in ourselves in the form. And then we have administrators. I, I had all sort of administrators it was throughout nine years. So you have those that understand what you're doing to get it and who thrive in what you're doing with children. But you have all, also other ones, probably uh, the ones that are newer. They care more about the form, but you don't have posted the objective. Not like, did you see the kids are reading and writing on their own? 
Yeah, but on your wall, uh, the the objective isn't right, and and I think we're missing the point by just uh, picking on those little things. Oh, I noticed the pictures in your poster don't align with the children that are sitting on the tables, and I'm like, what? Whoa, we had two absent students. We have to <laughs> reaccommodate. The students, not the pictures. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> and all those things. I'm like, of course, I, I noticed many of the teachers were sick. And many teachers uh, had, um, were stressed out to the max. Allergies were a big thing. So how did I take care of it? And that's where the energy and the natural healing comes in place. And is that I was allergic to half of the world. <laughs> half of the world. So, and when I came to Texas, well, it, it, it was even crazier. And um, well, I started taking care of me through natural healing because all the other peels and things that they give you, they make you drowsy and you cannot be drowsy with four years old under your care. Come on, you have to be alert and you have to be there because you never know what they're going to come up with, you know? So, and, uh, and to tell you an example, you never take anything from granted for granted with a little child. One day I have this little one who says, teacher, I brought an orange. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Good, you're gonna have some vitamin C. That's awesome. Well, next thing he know, I know is he's taking out the orange and a big knife to oh, cut the wow. orange. And I'm like, what are you doing? In your backpack? <laughs> well, to cut the orange. He was at his grandma's and without her knowing, he just took the kitchen knife, the chef knife. Wow. The orange at school. So you never take anything from granted. So you gotta be alert. <laughs> be alert. So, Again, very similar to the boardroom. <laughs> you never know who's in the nine, but you gotta look in the backpack, look in the briefcase. What else? <laughs> what else do you have in there? Show yeah. me. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yeah. So definitely being alert sounds like something that you no you noticed was important <laughs> in that example. Um, I want to go back to what you were saying about the, the form over function, right? And you mentioned that there were some things that were pointed out and the administration had certain goals that perhaps were difficult to fulfill in practice just because when you're handling a room of four-year-olds, there are other things that are more important or things that are going to be more impactful for them. But what was the impact on you? You mentioned you had allergies already but, and, and lack of sleep. What, what did you notice those things do to the quality of life or the quality of person you were in your life? Well, even though I was a giving person and I was happy and fulfilled by helping others, I was emptying myself out. I couldn't replenish myself enough so that is something that i learned you fill yourself up and then people drink from your bowl well because you gotta fill yourself up you can now be loading yourself loading yourself tasking yourself and then you will be running on fumes and that is not good for your health and it's not good for your wellness and um, many times, and that comes with the circle. When the stress becomes distress, and when it's stress becomes everything. distress. Is that what you say? Stress. Yes, distress. because it happens over and over and over, and you cannot replenish yourself. Mm. Eventually, you're going to manifest symptoms of some sort. Mm -hmm. So when you manifest those symptoms, then you're like, oh, now I'm ill. And then what? So you take medicines that usually task your system some more, and then the cycle continues. You, you become even sicker because you haven't taken care of the issue in the first place. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, human-friendly has some different petals. 
And those are the dimensions of human sustainability that we came up with. And is that um, it's not just one thing. So if you notice, you have the red one is your health, and then the orange is your nutrition, and then the green one is your environment. And environment is not just the trees and the air that you breathe, that is super important, but also the family and the people that you surround yourself with. Mm. And then the blue one is education, is what you put in your mind and what you keep feeding yourself with. Um, documentaries that talks, soap operas, drama, horror movies, what, what do you feed yourself with? And that starts vibrating and resonating. And the dark blue is your career and your work-life balance. So when I say tasking myself, so we're going to talk about someone who's super stressed, someone who is, isn't eating right because he's eating um, school lunches, that that will be another podcast that we can do about school lunches. My goodness. Sounds like it's going to be a controversial one. (laughs) Our kids need to have something different and more healthy. Mm. And then, um, um and then well you overload yourself and your lifestyle keeps going 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 and eventually well the system breaks and you become ill and of course kids carry all kind of illnesses and things and uh because they have colds and they have flus and things like that and if you're not strong yourself then it's going to have an impact in your life so that's when i discover energy healing and and natural medicine uh, specifically Nate for allergies and best bioenergetic synchronization for all the emotional uh, foundation. And I noticed that I was thriving with those things instead of dragging like I was when I was taking the allergy pills and this or that. Um, no side effects. The side effects are actually that you feel well. And as I started learning about it and feel experiencing in myself, I'm like, gosh, I, how can I help more people with this? And that's how I started learning and learning and learning until I became certified uh, to being able to do it. And I, I remember my daughter's pediatrician who used to see her frequently because all the, 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 colds and flus and things and fevers and these infections and so forth. Um, eventually, when I start doing it, she's like, how come Mariana is not coming back for her annual checkup? And I was like, well, I'm doing this. And she's like, really? I said, well, if it's working, go for it. Mm-hmm. And I sure think she's a healthy girl now. And she was, I didn't know, but she was allergic to all kinds of sugars then. And that's what was driving her immune system down. It was stressing her because school lunches, big muffing with a chocolate meal that has 30 grams of sugar by itself, uh, plus 45 grams of sugar of the muffing. And then if someone walked by with a sneeze or a cold, she'll get it. Because her, her immune system was already dealing with all these sugars. She so had loaded into her system. So learning those things, and that's when, let's go back to the supermarket. I am standing up there thinking, my gosh, what is really good for us? What is human friendly? I said, keep walking to the vegetable aisle. <laughs> keep walking. Keep walking. It's mostly human friendly. <laughs> yes, yes. Let me. So let me ask you this. Uh, I, I want to move into now thinking about you mentioned the the people who now are in the workforce, who are in the boardroom, let's say, who uh-huh. are now home. <laughs> many yes. of them, and uh-huh. many of them are surrounded by four year olds. So the so the boardroom. Their bedroom has transformed to the boardroom and the classroom. Now they're all together, right? We're in the middle of a pandemic that Mm -hmm. has created the environment for most people to, uh, for many people, not most, but but for many people to be able to to stay home and work from home. And now their immune systems also are as important, you know, now more than ever, because we have, you know, the COVID-19 is out there that 
could wreak havoc, right? Not only in, in what's happening in our environment, but also within our bodies. So I'm curious about what type of practices, you mentioned, I think earlier when you're talking about human friendly and bringing that into the boardroom, what kind of practices would one need to use in their home when their bedrooms, boardrooms, and classrooms are all mixed together? The first thing I'd say is, at the beginning, it will look like, oh my God, what's going on? Oh my God, like I, just what I felt. Oh my God, what did just happen? But then you will treasure this time like nothing else. Because uh, first of all, calm down. It's okay. Keep calm. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be okay. But I'm going to suggest for um, those executives to go into the internet and look for conscious discipline becky bailey she is amazing and she was my lifesaver as a teacher because she really taught me how to calm down the brain of a child but before you have to calm yourself down you know and then go into their level breathe she was the first, before I did any yoga teacher or meditation, just by seeing her, it's like, breathe. Yeah, I breathe. Then the child breathes. And it's amazing. I just uh, take a big in inhalation. And then the child was just like, ah, and we connect. Mm. It was beautiful, you know? And then first purposeful tasking. Um, they need to find interesting what you're asking them to do and explore different ways to say things explore tell them how you used to learn it because now there are different modalities how you can teach something make a game out of it um, make a game of building stories I paint something you paint something and then be careful with the times this is a time for mom where I do meetings and I need to be able to do meetings and you need to be able to do school right now or play or do something. They need to understand that. And kids is amazing. Discipline are like the railings of a staircase. You define that boundary, but they need that. They, they, they need to find there is a limit and understand that that limit is what defines the path that is safe for them to follow. Mm -hmm. So um, enjoy this time because this is unprecedented. Mixing those two things, your career, your family, and being able by society to accept this, that it's okay that I'm in a conference call and you can see my child bouncing on the back. And that, we didn't see your child. That's so human. Husband. <laughs> That's who we are. We're integrating this aspect. I, I find this totally okay. We needed this time as humans to come back to ourselves and find out that we don't need to stay out there wondering in all things, that it, it was time to come home. And I think it took a virus to do so. So mm -hmm. here we go. Let's ride this way gracefully. Love that. Time to come home. Nothing more human friendly than that. And, and Maria Claudia, for those who don't have that, that benefit, don't have that privilege because they're either essential workers, their work cannot be done from the, from the bedroom, right? Their bedroom has not converted into a boardroom and a classroom. They're, they can't be there. What, what advice or what recommendations do you have for those? Well, First of all, keep your, yourself healthy. And I know everyone says, wear the mask, wash your hands and do that. But many times viruses don't make us sick, but it's our stress, what takes our immune system and lowers it down. And that's when you're available for the bug to, and you end up at their mercy. <laughs> so, um, Calm down, come home. I, I, I wish you can do some meditation, some mindfulness, some release at the end of the day before you enter your house. 
Just think about every situation you are, we're engaging to and just kind of disconnect. Like imagine that was a hook and hook yourself from all those situations. And then take the hooks that maybe those situations left on you. Imagine, imagine, imagine. And unplug them from yourself and return them to them and just breathe and send there. That way it is a, as you have to disinfect your clothes and as you have to disinfect your shoes and everything you wore that day, that is going to help you disinfect the soul. And one, and do you want a, a little piece of advice? The other thing you can do is when you have a situation throughout your day, instead of replaying it in your mind, and she said, and he said, and maybe I should have come back and do something else. Take the situation and feel your body, feel it in your body. Come under the story and feel what part of your body gets activated. Sometimes it's your stomach, sometimes it's your arm, and sometimes it's like, I'm thinking a bit about this annoying lady that wouldn't stop, so, and somehow my, my stomach is, is, is bothering me. Feel it in your body and start breathing through it. Breathe, breathe, breathe. By breathing, you're dissolving that energy lump that you have in there. And what you have done there is embodiment. You have taken that energy that it was creating a cluster and a lump, and you have dissolving it, dissolved it, and you have integrated it into yourself and get rid of it. So the best thing you can do for yourself, for your family, on top of the cleansing, is just be back into yourself, into your body, and feel the impact that things have. Where am I feeling it? In my forehead. Oh my God, just thinking about it, it get me, gives me a headache. Okay, well, imagine you're breathing through your head where it's hurting, hurting. So breathe in, put air in there, and then exhale. And do a centric child breathing through your crown, through your legs, just in the middle of your body, you breathe in and you breathe out. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. I love the imagery that you mentioned about someone coming home from having, especially those that are, you know, those essential workers that are serving so many of us who can work from home, they are not. And they're having to deal with all the stressful people, the stressed out people who are coming to the stores or going to the, you know, you know, have the drive throughs or whatever clinics and hospitals and all those places that are open. I love the image of you just describing them sitting before they get out of their car into their home and unhooking themselves, right? From all of those situations, from those thoughts, from disinfecting, you said disinfecting your soul, which I thought that was really beautifully stated because we do some, we do carry everything that we experience. We carry it. We like, like you said, like a, like a donkey, why we put all these things in our, in our, our, our back. And then we carry that into the next thing. And we absolutely don't have the stress for it. There's no way that we can fulfill the function of being a you know, parent, a daughter, a teacher, a executive, a stylist, a, you know, a grocery store clerk. We can't fulfill those roles when we're so weighed down. I, I thought that was really beautiful imagery. And the breath does heal, doesn't it? The breath is, a, is such a natural instrument for us not only instrument is it, it can also be um i don't, I don't want to say drug because we have such negative connotation to the word drug but i do feel that it's a healing instrument that we don't utilize as mindfully as we can and i so i appreciate you bringing that forward so i um, i have developed a module just in different type of breathings with human friendly because we take it for granted we think that breathing is just in and out, in and out, and just keep doing it. But it's basically how we can manifest the spirit coming into our bodies. And um, breathing is so essential that just remember, when you hurt yourself when you were a kid, your mom will come tend to you and blow. 
<laughs> blow your knee. If, if it was hurting, or if it was your finger, she will come and I kind of cuddle in and blow. Come on, come on. <laughs> well, breathing is the same thing. You blow through through yourself inside, and you are tending to yourself. It's something that lasts ten minutes, but it's going to help you release and decompress. And when you do that, then you're no longer a donkey, but you can choose your reactions more gracefully. Um, you can allow things to happen and let them go because you don't need to keep all that into your backpack um, and just move forward and be available for that family that is waiting for you. And they have been worrying themselves. So time to breathe together. Time to breathe. Yes. <laughs> Maria Claudia, what are you, so what do you have available for people now? I, I, clearly your, your, your place of work is, is closed because of the pandemic, but are, how are you working with people? Are you doing some virtual classes or what exactly do you have to offer? Yes. Um, at this point, um, well, we have our energy healing practice closed. Mm -hmm. Um, we feel we're reopening at the end of May. God help us. Um, God help us. <laughs> God help us, God willing. <laughs> yeah. But, but if not, um, everyone is reinventing themselves. Mm -hmm. So why not? That's our nature as humans. So uh, I have a couple of seminars and workshops more human friendly and uh, meditation, mindfulness, and um, the energy codes. The energy codes is a book that wrote Dr. Sue Mortar. She has been my teacher for about 12 years. Yes. And um, basically she put it masterfully into this book that are the seven step, steps for soulful consciousness. And um, we go in depth because when people read the book, it's like, oh my gosh, it's one chapter and it's just like, I'm it's so dense and deep. So that's what I love about having a pre-K teacher that I'm very good at digesting and showing it to you. Like it's simple. <laughs> it doesn't need to be complicated. So I have created those seminars. And then also I have available for different corporations and companies who want to help uh, their employees decompress at home. Uh, we have these modules. They are very simple. And, and sometimes we overlook simpleness mm -hmm. and the power of simple. Um, but it's easy to integrate your life, but it's powerful to help you process and to help you um, drive through these times that are uncertain. Mm. And that's life. Life is uncertain. Well, I'll be sure to put all of the, the, the books that you mentioned, as well as some of the resources in the notes. So we'll have their website and also any contact information you'd like to provide. So if those of you want to connect with Maria Claudia after this, you know where to reach her and how to reach her. And, it, um, you know, it's I, I'm so grateful that a, you had the presence of mind at some point in your life to shift that vehicle, right? To Just like we upgrade our cars and sometimes we upgrade our homes, we sometimes have to upgrade the vehicle of our career and our vocation because that's what led you here, led you to share some, some thoughts and some tools and resources that are, are helpful, not only helpful, but really essential for people in the circumstances that we're all finding ourselves in. And like you said, you know, this is one of those rare opportunities in our generation that we have to integrate so many of the things that have caused so much discord and, and, and has pulled us and our attention and our abilities in so many different directions are now in many ways being integrated. And everyone globally has seen and, and, and has experienced either directly or indirectly through others, the impact of that. So thank you so much for bringing all those things to light for us today. Anything else you'd like to say oh, before we close? Valerie. Well, thank you. Because um, part of the human friendly module is to 
and this is one of the wishes we have, is to create a project with uh, students to create a news channel full of good news. Mm. The same impact, the same energy that you put to describe something bad and something horrific that is happening should be the same thing you should do with good news. Something that enlightens our spirit, something that gives us hope. And you're doing that. You're bringing hope to people. You're bringing them how to connect your life with joy and how to be out there living your dream. Mm -hmm. Just uh, it's possible. So we are surrounding ourselves with negativity and we don't need to do that. Just imagine the power we have. And this comes from my advertising and marketing background. If we have a liquid that is dark, bubbly, bitter, and is very bad for you being the spark of life, we can transform everything to be what we want to be. And why not to have just the beautiful things and the beautiful the, the beautiful job that other people are doing the other people are doing and the contributions to be news head news line why not we need to do that so that's one of the projects that we have in edu in human friendly education um let's see if we have we could find a university who sponsors that that's one of our projects in Human Friendly. I think that's wonderful and you're right. The, you, know, you mentioned one of the petals of your, of your logo there was your environment and education, right? So environment being not only the surrounding, but also you said the people that we surround ourselves with. And we have a saying in Spanish, dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres, right? Tell me who you hang out with and I'll tell you who you are. And then, so I think what you're talking about is really surrounding ourselves intentionally with people who have good news, people who also share the positive things in, the, in life. And that's one of the, the reasons I so appreciate these conversations on, on Time to Come Alive, because no matter where people are in life and how, what vehicle they've been driving and what it looks like, and if it's broken down 15 times or if they don't have a vehicle at all, that there's always something that they're striving for. So that's number one. And then I think the second pedal you also mentioned is the education that we have, is what we're, how we're nurturing our minds, the information that we're taking in. And what you just pointed out is that we also have to be mindful about what television we watch, what radio we listen to, what podcast we subscribe to, what our email inbox looks like, right? That what posts we like or dislike or who we follow, who we don't follow. And all of those things are having an impact, no matter how conscious or unconscious they, those choices might be, they all have an impact. And I, I love that you're looking for ways to be even more intentional about bringing the good news. I think that's, that's something that we all have to be really committed to in our own lives as the best contribution we can make to ourselves so that we then have the greater impact. If I ask you to think about a flower pot with a flower that is yellow and it has two green leaves and then now I ask you don't think about it you won't be able to the same way let's say you get a horror movie or a sad story or a crazy story once you saw it how do you process that it's already in your brain so, and those are the little seeds that I have seen in my practice day in, day out. Those little stories that seem so light, the letter of a song that I keep listening and listening, those little seeds ingrain in your soul, ingrain in your energy, and they start growing, and many times growing into symptoms that you go and it's like, well, no wonder you're feeling down. No wonder why you're feeling uh, ill. And no, because those things are stressing you. Mm. So being mindful of what you put in your life and your surrounding in your environment, what you put in your mouth, what you put in your ears, through your eyes, is very important. So my invitation is for you, of course you are, but for everyone to be human friendly. Human friendly is a lifestyle, it's a way to be, to care from one another, for one another, to 
help each other and to pay attention to the good. We have to celebrate who we are. We're human, we're uneven, we're unprepared, we're crazy. Metrics and all the stuff, yes, it matters, but it has its place. We have to put ourselves into the front place, front plane, and we have to come forward proud of who we are, humans. I'm absolutely proud to be human. Thank you so much, yeah. Maria Claudia. It's been such a pleasure and and incredibly relaxing to like, <laughs> listen to you all day. I'm like, yes, let me breathe in this conversation. But I so appreciate you and all of you who tuned in to be with us to listen live. And those of you who are listening to the recording, please do encourage you to take into your own soul some of the practices that we mentioned. Start being conscious about how you're nurturing your environment, your your mind, the your the family that you have. And I will be sharing Maria Claudia's information with you about Human Friendly so that you can connect with her even further. Thank you all so much for joining us to today for Time to Come Alive. Stay tuned for our next episode where we bring some more mindful conversation to help you become more conscious, connected, and creative. Have a wonderful rest of the day, everyone. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you all for watching.